as you may all know, there are different ways to creating or to achieving a particular goal. So also we have in form creation. If you want to create Microsoft Forms, you can actually do this using different approaches. In the previous videos, we use one approach by coming here to Microsoft Forms and just clicking on New Form, which I'm going to do again and we create this together briefly. This video, I'll be showing you one of the most productive, I have actually called this the most productive way for creating Microsoft Forms. And to better appreciate this, I would like to run quickly through the usual way of creating forms and create a very simple form and we we'll go ahead and create another using the second method. Right here on my form page, I'm just going to call this the uh, 201 form method 1, form method 1, which means the usual way. And let's just create a single question. But first, you will notice something here. There's this splash thing, which means suggestion, question, suggestion. And what does that mean? If you name your form with a title that relates to maybe previous forms you've created, it's going to automatically suggest some of the questions on those forms in case you want to reuse them. And that's the implication. When I click on it here, you see, it's a recommended from your past forms. Okay. Are you enjoying this um, training and gender? I think I like the two, these two questions. I can select both of them and click add selected questions. So I don't need to recreate them, they're already here, right? That's an advantage. I'm okay with this, I have the two questions now, all right? So we've created a first form, which is the usual method of creating form. When I go to responses, you will see from responses that, yeah, nothing has been done yet. I'm going to put it on preview and just fill it so that you can see. Yeah, my form is on preview. Are you enjoying this training? Yes, I'm my gender male. Cool. I'm done. Submitting. I'm going to click back here. You see on the response tab, now we now have, you know, response. And right here, you can see open in Excel. All right. So what is bad about this form? Don't get me wrong. Creating form using this method is not bad. You must be careful that, okay, does it meet your purpose? Does, does it meet, you know, what you want to use it for? All right. Now, when you create form using this method, you still have access to the data. Right here, I have it open in Excel. But pay attention to this logo and this area. When I click open in Excel, it's trying to open it in Excel. But it end up downloading my data to Excel. So right here, I'm going to put it on preview again, and I will feel. Let's assume a female gender is filling this from this time around. I say submit. We have two responses. I have opened the Excel right, and I have the data here. Let's click on it and see. But don't forget that I clicked on the open in Excel when I filled just one. That was only one, so one response then. So let's see what we have in our open Excel data. Yes, we only have one response in the Excel data. And shouldn't be surprised because it was only one response that was there when you click when I clicked on open in Excel. But after downloading it, I had made some updates. The form had additional response, which make it two responses now. But it does not reflect or it doesn't reflect in the Excel that I've downloaded earlier. And that is one thing here. For me to have access to the most recent data, I have to go back and download. That's one disadvantage here, that you have to be downloading the data. So if it's still fit for purpose, maybe what you are doing, you don't need real-time access to the data, you don't want to analyze it, you just want to have it somewhere. In that case, you can use this. But if you want to do more analysis, we, right here, you know, I've not even got it to that part. Depending on the kind of Excel, like this, I can enable editing and maybe I want to do pivot table. I can do all those things here. For example, right there, come to table design and click on summarize your pivot table. Then click on, okay. So I have a pivot table here to summarize this. I'm going to put gender here and put the gender count here. So I have mail, but I've done analysis. But if I download this updated data, I have to redo this analysis again. So that's one thing here that if your data is not complete you can't say you have done the analysis because the moment the data you know gets uh you have more responses you have to download again so number one 
this method works if all you need is just to have people fill the form and when the form closed maybe later on just want to download and work with the data this is good but if you want to do much more than this you know number one to be proactive how do you run the analysis before people start submitting responses that's possible so you don't have to wait the when all the responses are completed before you run your analysis and you don't have to repeat the analysis you do it once then it's there and you can also share it real time with people they see the responses they see what is happening they see the analysis but you can't do that here because of the nature of this form so that will lead me to creating forms using the second method which i call the most productive way of creating forms and to do that first the approach is simple first you have to um, open an excel workbook you have to start from excel workbook that is linked to excel online it will be easier for you then to um, create form from it all right so let's click on this waffle button here and i have you know excel i have excel here but mind you the moment if all this thing here loads like this then meaning instead of going to excel workbook i can actually create my new workbook from here new you can see excel workbook right here this is going to create excel workbook and you also see here there's something here called forms survey you can create form survey that which is this same form as well you can create new but these are excel workbook first step that i often advise is name your workbook right here it's called book i have to name it and i'm going to call it the 201 oops i have to come back and call the 201 is saved after the the 201 form method 2 all right so when i click outside it's going to save it's saving now you see it's saved so this is just excel, excel workbook which is excel online similar to the excel on desktop but you know there are features on desktop that you cannot see online there are features online you can see on desktop so just go to the insert ribbon here and you see forms so right like this form now is not available on the desktop version is right here on the web so you have to click on new form it will take me to Microsoft Forms and name the form, a new form, create a new form, name the form DA201 DA Form Method 2. But well, that is the same name that I have on my Excel workbook. Right here, it has linked them together. And if I go back to my workbook, you will see something has happened. A new tab has been added called Form 1. And on that Form 1, five columns are already there by default. ID, start time, completion time, email, name. These things are already linked to this Excel, uh, to this form. All right. So let me go ahead and click on um, add questions. This time around, it's not suggesting, you know, things for me, but I can go ahead and ask, uh, add questions. Put this as gender. I mean, nope, I'm not adding this. Uh, female. Female and uh, make right. The next is choice as well. Are you enjoying this training? It's a yes or no. Yes, no. Okay, cool. I have this. If you come here to the responses tab, you're going to see something similar to what we have on this previous um, forms, form type, form method one. But pay attention to this opening exit area. Look at the icon for the exit. Look at the second one too. Look at the icon for the exit. You can see a cloud icon, you know, uh, alongside with the exit logo. This shows that this exit file is linked to, I mean, this form is linked to an exit file that is stored online in the cloud. That is the, same, that, that's the explanation. And you see the advantage of this shortly. So let's go ahead and fill this. I'm going to put it on preview. Choose female gender. Yes submit and let me come back here you see um responses i have one responses when i click on open in excel it's going to open this my excel back which i already have here but pay attention to this excel the response already here wow so as people are filling the form i don't necessarily need to be downloading every time another response from a guy and you enjoy here from a guy click on submit I just click on submit and come back to this form. You see the response will drop here. Real time. Do you see that? So this these are so many advantages. Okay, beyond the fact that you can now share this Excel with your team member and they can have access to it and see what is happening per time. Beyond that, 
which you can share here. How about analyzing this data before people even start filling it? So depending on the kind of forms you are creating, if you need to do analysis on it, to segment, to have statistics to give out, you should do that even before people start filling. And that makes you proactive because you've done it before that time and you can have save the time for yourself. All right. How do you do that? First, I can actually open this on my desktop as it is. But if you can't see the icon, there should be an icon open in desktop. But if you cannot see it, go to File, go to Info, and you see Open in Desktop app. You're just going to simply open up this same Excel on my desktop using the Excel on desktop. Yes, I have it now. Even though everywhere seems empty, but if you click on this form one, you will see it here. You see, we have the two responses. Everything is synchronizing with online. If I go back to my DF201 and also submit another one mail, and this guy said he's not enjoying it, I will follow up on him. If I come back to the desktop, you will see that it's synchronizing. You see, the third response will drop here. Do you see that? It's here. So it's, there's no need to say, let me go and check the form. If you have this Excel, you can open it on your desktop and you are having real time data, updated one. And when I click on it, because it's in table format, I can click on this table design summarize the pivot table like we did the other time but i can run more analysis on this say for example okay i have my gender here and i also have the gender so that i can have the count okay i have this is analysis for gender now i can copy i can paste another here and here instead of gender i want are you enjoying this training that is the concern are you enjoying this training let's see those people say yes or no let's copy this again and let's have it here and um, rather than you enjoying, I'm going to move that out and put gender. And then the count. I can bring gender here. Excuse me, as value. Male and female. Um, yeah, I can actually bring this here. You know, depends on how you want to. I, I can do it this way. Male, you know, uh, for female, yes. For male, no. You can see how it works now. We have two for female. We might even do it in cross tabulation, but I have my analysis here. And what if I feel more responses? Let me go ahead and fill about three more, just randomly. Random. We have female, say no. Fill as many as possible. Say no. Female, say yes. Okay. Female, yes. And male. And I yes and then I'm just feeling them. <laughs> oh, it's okay, I didn't feel all that response for that submit. I want to make it male because it's not compulsory. Or well, I feel so many, so many. So let me go back here and come to my form. Wow. I see they are all dropping every time. You see that now? So let's go back to our form. We have about 10 responses now. Go back to my form. You see after me. All you just have to do is click here, go to your pivot table here and click refresh. It's done refreshing. Do you see that? Awesome. So it is very productive because before people start feeling, you've done your analysis, and it's easier to even connect to this particular Excel in Power Automate. In case you have an automation request, you can connect to this same Excel because it's stored on cloud. The one we have in the form method one is not that appropriate because you cannot connect to this. Once you click on it, it's downloaded on your desktop, it's not synchronizing online. So, depending on the use case, that is why I overall it is most productive to use the combination of Excel Online plus Microsoft Form when building your forms. It gives you a lot of flexibility. All right, you see more of the use cases for you know this kind of scenario in the coming in the coming um, use case session. But also, sometimes you don't necessarily have to go and create your uh, your form by linking it to Excel Online if you don't need it. In many instances, you might just want to move all the data from the form to a SharePoint list. In that scenario, you don't need to go the other route. If you have it in plan to build a Power Automate flow, that automatically, when they fill the form, you should bring, take the responses and drop them on the SharePoint list. Then SharePoint list might be a reliable data source for you to connect Power BI to or to use workflow and the rest. So you might not pay attention to let me link them together to my uh, Excel online. All right? Thank you and. Bye for now.